Welcome to RA Balance Florida, your destination for innovative technology crafted to offer non-intrusive, chemical-free, and natural treatments tailored to address symptoms and complications across a range of health concerns. Grounded in alternative wellness and holistic principles, our mission is to accompany you on the path towards enhanced health and well-being. Whether you seek relief from chronic pain, desire improved circulation, or simply crave a holistic boost to your overall health, RA Balance Florida is here to support you every step of the way. We offer affordable and safe alternative therapy that combines the body's natural healing ability with the latest biomedical technology. Our innovative therapy uses medium-intensity magnets to restore your body's pH balance, neutralize pathogens, and reduce inflammation. This can help to relieve pain, improve sleep, boost energy levels, and more. Okay, go back even further. We want you as horizontal as possible. This is the other frequency box. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's taking care of the whole core. Okay? Okay. And then we're going to place the magnets. You have to put that under your arm. This is positive by, for cardio, for your heart, mm -hmm. and your cardio system. This is another one. Just put your hand on that. Don't grab it or just let it rest on there. Now we change it to negative. This is taking the lower core. And then, of course, your lower abdomen. And then this circulates back through the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm snoring. Just let me know. And right now you're you're. You can snore. It's okay. You're actually the scan has already started. You don't feel a thing, right? Yep. So within five minutes, your body will be in a pH balance and create an equilibrium. So you want to make sure you keep your feet uncrossed and your hands flat. You don't want to grip it. Kind of... All right. So I'm going to ask you questions, and she's going to enter this information. <coughs> okay. Uh, for everyone, I'll ask you the questions. Mm -hmm. So, does your lung illness have a specific name, or you yeah. just have problems? It's called BOOP. B O O P. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bronchial obliteration with a with organizing pneumonia. It's very rare. Right. So it's called BOOP. Okay. So your main reason: stroke, heart condition, lung condition. Yeah. And high blood pressure. And high blood pressure. And okay. of course, we got some medication that you're taking here. Yes. <coughs> and how long Can ago? Can I see those? I'm gonna, I am going to need to see that a little bit for dates because you put a couple of dates down there. Strokes, what year? Stroke 2023. 2023. And then bypass 2018. Triple bypass 2018. Lung illness 2010. And of course, you Okay, take your time. 2018 for the surgery, yes. Right. And then we have the medications. So what is your blood pressure? What is it normally? Yeah. What now it, with the medications? No, what it, what, what it was and what it is now with your blood pressure. Okay, so it was about 180 over 110. Before. Before. Which is high. You think? Yeah. <laughs> at one point, it we've was, heard worse. It was two over two ten, um, over one seventy at one point. Okay. Okay. So now it's one thirty six over seventy three. It's kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And how long? Around the meds. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been taking the blood pressure medication? Religiously, since uh, the beginning of twenty twenty three. So That's why I had to show because I need to A little over a year. A little over a year. Okay. All right. And your medications, what do you have? Okay, okay. so I have amalonapine. Okay. Metropolo. And? Cystazole. And atorvastatin. Atorvastatin is the cholesterol? Uh -huh. Okay, so do you, you didn't mention high cholesterol. I didn't see it there. Yeah, it's here, but it's okay. So he's got high cholesterol also. Okay. Any other things that you think that you may be dealing with, like allergies? You get any numbness? You mentioned tingling in your arm one time. When mm -hmm. I first met you a few a month ago, is that from the stroke? Yeah. Well, they say that it's the brain sending signals to the arm to try to get the muscles to 
um, get back to a, a normal baseline. Got you. And so that's your left arm or your right arm? That's my right arm. Okay. Just like you, I'm lucky enough to be a lefty. Because most people get a stroke on their left side and it affects their right side. Mm -hmm. And since Correct. I'm a lefty, I was able to drive and everything within 10 days. Right. Okay. Do you have any other questions? So what we're going to now Let me do... Let just take a look at So I have a question. Memory. Okay, certainly. Take so it. now, because of who I am, uh, what happens if my nose itches? You can lift your you hand. Can lift your oh, hand. can I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's we, better to take your hand off. Don't pick up the whole magnet. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you don't want to, obviously, something like that. We okay. also have a, something happens, you need to use restroom. Just yell out, we have a little speaker in here, because we're going to turn the lights out, and then we're going to leave for 45 minutes. And we want you just to really just think about complete relaxation, calmness. Hopefully, if this is doing what we hope it will do for you, you'll probably fall asleep. Probably rest you like you got a body massage. That's how you're probably going to feel 15, 20 minutes into it. I wouldn't know because I don't do massages. So this is another way that, you know, you, you understand that the body is getting into equilibrium from the pH level. Because now you can relax. You don't have the inflammation. You don't have the, obviously, the other things that are going on in your body. So if you start feeling that, just go with it. You might feel some weird things, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt you. As you completely see, it's completely non-invasive. Okay. Okay. Do me a favor. See that where the screen is? Right here? No, the other the screen. Okay. Tip, grab it from the top and turn it towards me. It should, no, 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 not the whole camera. Okay. Just the screen part. Tip it the other way towards me. It should turn. There you go. Keep going. Four? Okay. I want, yeah, I want to be able to see the picture. Oh, okay. So see. I can see what we're doing. That's it. Oh, okay. You wanted it towards you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure that I'm in there the way I should be. Are you good? Yes. Okay. I don't know that... I can't see if the sound is recording, but that's fine. It's just leave it that way. Okay. Okay. Tell me your medications again. An... Ano... Uh, Amylodipine. A-N. Okay. It's hard to read some of your writing. <laughs> it's hard left is to do those sheets. Because we, we run our hand across the and It's very difficult. And then I have to be able to spell those stupid names. Yeah, I want to make sure I spell them correctly for the docs here. Do so you have any like questions, Wayne? No. You good? Comfortable? Uh, I leave it in your hands. Yeah, okay. You came to the studio? Yes. Whose hands did you leave it in? Mine. Right. Now you're in my studio. Right. Okay, next one. Mode. Metropolo. Metropolo. I don't know if I spelled it right. Metropolo. Polo. And when a doctor sees it, or whoever he is looking at, they'll know. Yeah. Barbara, would you give me that tape, please? This one. Did. Yeah. That one right there. I want to use yep. that. I want to take one of these. That might make me put a little bit further down towards the side, I think. We don't want these moving too much. <laughs> Why'd you get into this? Or how'd you get into this? Okay. Well, like we told you in our I don't remember. I'm video. Old. We were in the Bahamas. My wife was spending three days a week in bed. <coughs> She'd been to every doctor known to man. She's got chronic illnesses, RA and Sjogren's and some other things. And a friend of ours that she knew said, well, well, this she had lupus and smothering, and she said, <coughs> they opened up a clinic there in the Bahamas. She was one of the first clients, <coughs> and almost immediately she started feeling better. So I started doing it probably six months later. We were in the Bahamas for three years. She's doing 80% better than what she was. She's off her medications. I'm off my medications, and we feel just so much better. So is this covered by insurance at all? It's not covered by Western Medicine costs, but the people, what we've been working with is if you have an HSA account, mm -hmm. which a lot of people do, health savings account to work, or mm -hmm. you can contribute to every 
to reduce your income, you can use it to reimburse yourself. You get a credit card. So that's HSA qualified because it's considered to be a medical treatment. So we are working with Social Security and some of the other ones, but of course right now they consider it to be experimental. So it's not covered by traditional insurance companies. Hopefully someday it will. But again, once you see the, the difference, I mean a lot of people have deductibles and they're spending money on blood tests and <coughs> things outside, medical things, if they can eliminate those, they probably wind up being about the same cost. And they also get the benefit of actually knowing that they're feeling better. What's the average age of the people that come through here? I would say the youngest, 10 years old. The oldest, 92. I'm not 92 yet. So the average is probably 40 to 60 in that range. And whether we know it or not, age has a little bit to do with it. It's more about what we've experienced in our life that creates the, the, the issues with our, with our health, whether it's our diet, what we've been exposed to in our environment, our genetics, all those different things have a key element in determining really where we go with our ability to heal ourselves at some point. Because when we're younger, we don't necessarily have those problems, right? Right. Mm -hmm. our Why do you have to be hydrated? Because now you're detoxing your body. And it makes water helps. Flow better. Basically, when you detox, you want to get those toxic elements out of your body, and water is the best way to do that. And we, we, we recommend alkaline water, or now that we're using hydrogenated water to help cleanse the body quicker. Because alkaline water, a lot of people drink that because they want to balance their yeah. pH. This is now balancing the whole body. Their pH level will, will be. 7.4 to 8.2, depending on each area of the body. How does it work? Because now that I'm here, it's easy for me to ask you some questions. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, okay. No, it's fine. How does it affect, like, chronic pain? That was. Back I'm pain. I'm going to ask you questions about. Okay. Are you in pain? If so, where? No. And we're going to discuss. No. The intensity. No pain. How do you sleep? How would you say? Um. Yeah, I sleep. sleep. You feel tired when you wake up. Yeah, I don't sleep great. Sleep? Yeah. Okay. Because my mind is always going. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's a part of basically resetting the body or creating an equilibrium, so that you sleep when you're supposed to sleep and you're awake when you're supposed to be awake, right? And our lifestyle has a lot to do with that. So we have to work on resetting that. But when you talk about chronic pain, that's created by inflammation in the body, mm -hmm. which. You read some of our interviews that we've had here locally with, with those with chronic pain. Go Let ahead. me finish answering the question, ahead, please. <clears throat> you will see how it's affected them with arthritis, with severe back pain. We have a gentleman that's a fireman, paramedic for 35 years. Mm -hmm. So much pain, he was on steroids, getting injections every week, still not in pain, still always having pain. And even now we'll let the diabetes and some of the side effects. He's been with us for about a month and a half now. You can read his interview, but he's just doing How often do they come in? He comes in, right now he's coming in once a week. He started it twice a week. Okay. <clears throat> but he's done phenomenal with his diet and, and his hydration, because his numbers go up every time he comes in, which means he's doing his part. And his percentages, based on the scan report, are also increasing, which is what we want to see. Eventually those those um, ailments will, continue, will, will get better and they'll start dropping off the list. Same with the food allergies. Once you get the equilibrium at 90 to 95 percent, your body should be able to heal, handle most of that again, if you do your part. And that's the that's the beautiful thing about it. It's an individual program. It's not one size fits everybody, right? Because the frequencies for you are different than they are for somebody else. All right. Go. Well, that's cool. You're not experiencing pain, problems falling asleep, or staying asleep. Do you wake staying up? Staying asleep. Staying asleep. So how, how many hours do you think you get, Wayne? Well, I'm up like every two, two and a half hours. Oh, so you're not And really then I'm back to sleep again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up, do you feel rested. not rested? Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah, and that has that has a lot of effect on our short-term memory. Our, 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 our inability to our inability to sleep regularly, six or seven hours, seven hours being seven to eight actually being the best for us and to get into that REM sleep. So this treatment, when you go home this afternoon, if you're not rushing around, we recommend you just go home and rest and see how it affects you. Yeah, that's not it. 
Huh? I have a podcast from here, and then I have a. Uh-oh. Uh Erin Lowry is starting her campaign kickoff. And you know Rob Gorkman? Mm-hmm. So I have to do videos for him, and he wants to do, help them, the three candidates. He wants to help them. So I have to meet with them at their kickoff. It's really just about business. Okay. I hate politics. Be careful. You got some... As you, yeah, you know, take you care got care some yourself. heavy duty stuff going on. You got to take care we of yourself. We recommend 30 to minutes to an hour a day on yourself. Commit you, commit to it. Like your doctor told you before you had your heart attack. You're here. Right. Right? You need to listen a little bit if you want to you know, really get the full benefits of what you're doing. Any other questions before we let you rest? No. Nope. Okay. So what we're going to so do now... So I'm just going to ask if you had to rate anxiety <coughs> level, stress level... Do you feel like you have any depression? No depression. Phobias? Anything no like phobia. that? No uh, phobia. Just a little bit stressed from work because you're a very busy man. Uh, just stress in general. Yeah. What about uh, COVID? Did you get COVID? I had COVID. You had COVID? Did you have the COVID back. vaccine? No. So you had COVID once or twice? Once. Once. Okay. And we put that in the because now we also can scan for any of the potential side effects that that might have left you with. You mean like long yes. COVID? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The aftermath, they call it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let you rest. We're going to let you rest. I went through 67 different viruses. Okay, there we go. Do you want me to turn this off yeah. for now? Because we're going to shut the light off. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Press the red button on the top. This one right here? Yep. We just, Question. we'll talk a little bit as we're getting some information. So, Wayne, how are you feeling? Uh, I feel relaxed. It's been That's about an hour. Wow. I'm not, I'm not good at sitting still. Well, you did good. We, we were watching you. you. You were out. Yes. You were sleeping. We, we, re, we, we watched you through our little camera, too. So we want to see how you're reacting to the treatment. You were and completely relaxed. So that's good. That's yeah. what we expected. Because for me, it's so weird because like my nose itch, my eye itches, yeah. and I didn't. I, tried, I moved my hand, I think, once. That's okay. To scratch. But... I'm not really, like, this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I'm not good at Because I don't have the patience, because I'm always going. So it was interesting to be able to relax, and um, I don't think my mind, I think my mind really wasn't going anywhere. I don't think I was thinking really. That's perfect. Yeah. Good. Well, that's because you're, again, you were in that equilibrium where your body never it operates balance. right now. You're you're all over the place based on your lifestyle and what you work and everything right. else that you're doing. <clears throat> and because now you've created that balance, your body's like, Wayne, what are you doing? This is Thank cool. You. This is nice. So <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to disconnect and then we're going to print out the report and we're going to go into the conference room. Yes, yeah, so I get you in the screen. represents everything that the scan picked up in your body. Some of it's more prolific than others, mm -hmm. but these are things that your body is currently dealing with and probably many of them you're aware of because you've dealt with, obviously. Right. Uh, but notice the top one where it says acidic pH, right. which basically creates most of the, the negative responses to the foods that we're eating in our diet. So your, your pH right now is very acidic. Which is great because I, I drink 9.5 water all the time. Yeah, yeah. Water has a very little bit of difference to do when we're talking about the organs, though. Okay. Okay, so it might have to do with your immune system and different things like that relating to how you're flushing things. But you're, we're talking about at the cellular level, right? The water doesn't necessarily, because you have malabsorption down here. Okay. Your body's really not reacting um, in a positive way because of the imbalance in your system. So when your body doesn't absorb properly, you're not getting the proper nutrients out of the food. The water's going to help a little, but that's only one part of the, the body that really helps, right? So as a result, 
you have a weak immune system, which means that basically when you we, when you get a, a, an ailment, right, you catch things maybe a day or two. It doesn't really matter, but it seems like your immune system is a little bit low. Which they, all of these issues can be treated with this protocol and with the RH balance equilibrium. We talked about the sleeping disorder, which you already know that you're not sleeping properly, and that again that's because of low oxygen levels, okay, stress, anxiety, a lot of these are all kind of connected. That creates why we don't sleep properly, because we have a lot of things going on in our lives. The low oxygen level has to do with your respiratory condition, your ability to, to take that oxygen so that you can breathe properly at night and sleep properly. Does that make sense? It doesn't fall in line yeah. with my oxygen levels, because I check them all the time. Right, because of my lung illness, and I'm at 96 to 99 percent almost always. That's good. It can also sometimes have to do with your hydration levels, too, and your body's ability to move its blood around freely. Go ahead, continue. <coughs> yeah, yeah, so okay. we'll just go through it and then yeah. ask any questions as you get. Yeah. Uh, sounds like you have some, maybe some, some issues with sinusitis, which is allergies related, could be seasonal. Uh, you might take some medication for that. Uh, hypertension, you already mentioned. And that has a relation to, not necessarily that it's monitoring your blood pressure, but it's telling you that your body, if you hadn't been taking the medication, obviously your blood pressure would be a lot higher. Mm -hmm. The COP is the book, basically, that you talked about, right? That's the, the update for that. AFib deals with your irregular heart situation, mm -hmm. which means you're, it doesn't necessarily mean it's critical, but throughout the day your heart is not being consistent. Mm -hmm. It's up and down as far as highs and lows. Okay, high cholesterol. You Very probably did. You already kind of knew that, right? Um, but that's why you're taking some of that medication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, gastritis and metabolic disorder. You know, I think you know as far as your diet and how your stomach may be okay. affected, right? Mm -hmm. Colitis, which is all related to the obviously the eating disorder with. Um, gastritis, and of course the malabsorption syndrome is a big one for many people because they don't absorb any, very few of the nutrients they're taking into their body, which creates obviously a lot of weaknesses in the body ability to heal. Post-stroke conditions, you know what those are. Peripheral neuropathy, that's the things that are going on with your nerves in your hands. Your spinal compression, which means you probably have some back pain from time to time or some other ailments in your, in your spine. And then the, and the final one is mercury poisoning. You probably eat a lot of shellfish or a fair amount of it, or, or uh, shrimp, different things like that from, from the waters that around here or maybe even outside of here. So that's kind of the overview of what your body's dealing with. Some more than low, we don't have the percentages yet because then usually what happens, it takes three or four treatments for us to actually put percentages of numbers on those mm -hmm. as far as which one is the worst versus some right. of the other ones. Some will be higher or lower than others. And as the treatments uh, continue, those numbers go higher, and then those become, your body will start feeling better. The allergies, these are things that negatively are affecting some of these things. So these are the foods that we're asking you to kind of stay away from. Pineapple, tomato, onions is a big one, and that's usually on most everybody's list because of the soil that it's growing in. And, uh, the uh, pesticides that they may be using, <laughs> celery, gluten, you know what that is, right? Obviously everybody has uh, an allergic reaction to M uh, GMO and gluten is a big one. Soy, that's in a lot of mayonnaises and different things. Lactose, I think you know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. And of course you're allergic to shellfish. And all of that. I think you said you like to eat shrimp, don't you? No. I eat no sauce. No, no shellfish. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. That's good. The only shellfish I eat is, if I'll eat, it'll be a shrimp, okay. but not a lot, and almost never. Right. I don't eat, I'll have lobster tail, but I haven't had it in forever, and okay. I don't eat That's crab, good. so I don't eat okay. money shellfish at all. I eat no celery at all. That's good. Well, so that means so. Yeah. that'll help you understand that. Those are the things that you should eat at this point. Mm -hmm. But you look down here at the bottom, mercury poisoning, there's probably some of that still in your system because that could stay in your system for years. 
okay. without it being taken out through the treatment and, and your ability to, to get rid of the fungus and the bacteria mm -hmm. that that's created. So that's why they want you to stay away from any shellfish until that number and until regular that, fish as well. And regular fish until that number really comes down. I eat like, so little fish. Like really. Well, that's true. Uh, the tuna fish sandwich, but then I don't eat any. Yeah. Like that I really don't eat any yeah. fish. Well, most, of the, most of the fish is nowadays, it's got mercury in it. Yeah. Your deficiencies, this helps you understand really what your body needs in order to heal. Zinc, magnesium, vitamin B, C, and E. Now, some people take vitamin pills, but because you have malabsorption, we're recommending thinking about taking it in a liquid form so that your body can assimilate it quicker and it goes into the bloodstream because of the malabsorption issue. You can take vitamins, but that doesn't mean it's getting through. Right. Right. And then what to avoid? Everybody knows processed canned foods, right? Salt and sodium because of your blood pressure. I and I never, I know, everything has salt and sodium in it, right. but I never, ever, ever, never add salt to anything I eat. Right, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Fatty fried foods, you know, <laughs> some of these things you already probably already know. Yeah. Refined yeah, carbohydrates. Which you know everybody knows about that alcohol, I don't drink. fish, caffeine. I don't you know what nightshades are? No. So nightshades are white potatoes, eggplant, oh. peppers, um, tomatoes. Tomatoes, which is, the which is up on the top. Yeah. And this, you know, some of these here are the other ones is as dairy and wheat. So these are the foods they want you to avoid. And that doesn't mean you have to avoid them forever, mm -hmm. based on how you know how things progress. And so, <clears throat> they're recommending obviously two to three treatments to begin with, and see how things progress. Uh, this next treatment, you would get your hydration and your percentages relating to hydration and diet, so you know what you're doing there very quickly, and you'll know what those numbers are. And we want those numbers to be 85 to 90 percent at some point. Most people come in; they're probably going to be 40 to 60 on those issues. So you can start working on the food part of this and your deficiencies and then based on you know doing at least an, another treatment plan you can decide you know how further you want to take it. So at least you have the information and the knowledge to, to make an informed uh, well, decision. Because I'm going to edit this anyway but Questions. so I happen to have part of the strongest immune system that you'll ever find. I heal amazingly well. People don't have a stroke and are up and about in 10 days driving and doing what I do. I heal really, really well, my, and I don't get colds. For me, it's always been go big or go home. So the heart attack, the stroke, the lung illness. But when I, was, I breezed through COVID, I didn't have any COVID issues, ironically enough. Boop kicked in during COVID, mm. and I went to the hospital, and they don't care. You, you have COVID. That's always mm. what they're going to tell you. And they were giving me antibiotics for COVID, and I'm saying, no, that's not. I need steroids because that works with boop. Right. They didn't want to listen. They didn't want to listen. Nobody wants to listen because they made more money if you were in the hospital and you had COVID. Sure. Finally, they listened, gave me steroids a day and a half, and of course I was feeling better. I was on my healing, on my way to heal. And they said, all right, your doctor's releasing you. And I said, they're discharging you. I said, no, I'm not going. We have to go. I said, what do you do? Have the cops come and take me out? No, we're not going to do that, but your insurance company's not going to pay. I said, so you know what? I'll pay. She couldn't deal with that. So they gave me another day. And that was enough in steroids for me. Because he said, well, we'll send you home with steroids. But that, like you said, because I, I believe that... In this list of what I believe I have, so I believe that I definitely have sleep disorder, I have memory loss, I have stress and anxiety, of course I have hypertension, never ever ever had a, had an AFib attack, never any of, my, my watch tells me if I have, I, and I test it all the time, it's not perfect I'm sure. But doctor never had an issue with that. Yeah, it could be super, super subtle. If it um, yeah. The thing here that is works on both sides would be the malabsorption, and I think that that's an issue that I have. I believe that I have that because these are the six things that you say I'm deficient in, 
And these were things I was deficient in when I took the ANS test. Okay. So I buy, I mean, I buy into that without a problem. Um, well, again, so when you look at the report, mm -hmm. the percentage of that doesn't mean you necessarily are having a, it's something that re you recognize now. Right. This is something that the scan is saying is a potential that your body may be dealing with in a very small way. That's how sensitive it is. So we, we talk about the immune system because of some of the other things that you're dealing with, okay, and your high pH, that may be something in, in the future that's going to create uh, your ability to, to be able to deal with uh, infection. And because you have mercury poisoning, that's a sign of a weak immune system. In a small way, because it didn't get rid of it. You still have it. So that's how you got to look at some of that. It's not, again, that's why we talk about percentages. That number of, as far as a weak immune system could be at 60%. We want it at 90. Right. So that doesn't mean you necessarily are 100% affected by it. The ones that you're feeling, you know. Your body's already told you. Okay. Well, right. We're telling you. Some you know, own it. Right. I mean, so now yeah. we're explaining potentially the reason why your means this issue about an immune system is there is because your ability to get rid of, rid of some of these things like mercury poisoning that you probably didn't know you had. It. No. And my my question to you is, <clears throat> you do a lot of these scans. Mm -hmm. Do most of them come back with mercury poisoning? I'd say about uh, sixty yeah. percent. Because we live in Florida. A lot of people have been exposed to mercury. We don't know how long, how long ago. It doesn't mean you got rid of it. No, right? I, I, and regardless if you stopped eating fish. Well, well right? you I don't could know. get one really contaminated fish, and if your body just doesn't have as great of an ability to get rid of the mercury, you can just sit in there for a long time. Well, right? I mean, as a kid, I don't know if you had did it, but everybody has. I had them. <laughs> we, we, well, no, I didn't have any problems. I was good that way. But we had a thermometer, when it broke, we played with the mercury. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Almost every kid did it. It was kind yeah. of cool. Oh, well, okay, yeah. so there you go. Yeah. So yeah. that's something that happened maybe many years ago, which doesn't mean your body got rid of it. Right. Um, and that's what this is picking up. That's how sensitive, I yeah. guess, is what we're talking about. Common sense, because of what I, I wrote, would say that I have post-stroke conditions. That, yes. Right. And eye cholesterol, because of the medicines I, I told them and the COPD because of poop and hypertension because of the medicines I'm on. Right. Um, you know, memory loss is an interesting one because when you have a stroke and you have a heart attack, when you have bypass surgery, your body hates going, the blood flow flows for a certain path. When you change that, the body hates it. Yeah. So that affects your memory and the strokes yeah. show it. Yeah. Don't help. The sleeping disorders are interesting because, for me, and again, I can only go by me and how I live. Well, it's your body. Right. right. Um, and um, I guess, I, I mean, I don't guess, I know I have that because I don't sleep through the night. Right. So, um, see, so what, what the balance of the pH, because you, you felt that calmness or, you know, you felt relaxed. The, all of these ailments are going to be treated collectively and they're going to focus on the ones that you're more concerned about to begin with, right? Such as the cholesterol, the hypertension, etc. The COP. AFib is, is not necessarily prolific, like I mentioned. It could be just, you don't really know until you wear a monitor, but if your heart rate is just a little, that's considered to be AFib. It's supposed to be perfectly balanced, right? 60 to 70 in most cases, but if your heart races for a few seconds, you really don't feel it. But that doesn't mean you don't have it. No, I... That's what I'm saying, especially with your heart condition. Look, I went through life thinking, that, hey, everything was great. And then I also <laughs> had a heart attack. So, there's surely, our bodies are an amazing thing. You know, but we don't know what's going on inside most of the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I get it. that. Um, yep. I'm going to take this video and I'm going to edit it up. I'm going to take out anything that we spoke about. Right. That doesn't belong in there, in my opinion. Right. Um, and then um, I'll get back to you, look at it, see if it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Work for you? I yeah. just want to throw this out there for you. Go ahead. Your onion allergy, I, 
I don't know what's going on with onions, but 98% of the people now are coming back with an onion really? allergy. Well, I, don't I know get what's it. Going it's, on. It's but, it's because, it's yeah, it's yeah. 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 But you can still have shallots, scallions, chives, things like that. So. I think I'm going to deal with the onion stuff. Just kidding. <laughs> I made a huge okay, you, you, made okay. Yeah, I think like I don't really eat pineapple so a lot. A lot of people say that I don't eat that anymore. Or tomato, but I eat tomato. Right, tomato. Because I eat and pasta sauce. Right, mm -hmm. and that's the acidic pH. And ketchup. Um, right on hamburger. Vicky, my wife, is allergic to any citrus. Wow. She's allergic to tomatoes. Okay. Um, I don't have any issues with gluten that I know of. So when I say these things, it's something that I don't know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, the only way you'll know is to lactose cut it out for is a while interesting. and right. then reintroduce it. Right, that's the point. It's like if you take it out and you avoid it, maybe you'll feel better. Right. Lactose is an interesting one. At one point in time, I thought I had a lactose issue. Then I put lactose back in, and I was fine. But I don't, I don't drink much milk at all. Um, well, lactose has got other forms, right? Yeah, right. So I'm sure. Cheese, cheese yeah. sour cream, um, sour cream. You know, There's ice a lot cream of things like lactose. Ice cream. I, the thing. only processed canned food I eat is tuna, which could add to the mercury. Probably avoid that. Right. Because tuna is um, notoriously high, and I love tuna. Tuna is notoriously high in mercury. Yeah. I don't eat any processed meats. Good. Okay. Good. Do you eat like breakfast cereals, things no. like that? Perfect. No. That's great. And I don't go and get bologna, salami, roast, I don't get any of that processed meat. Nice. Turkey, chicken, I don't, I, I'll make my own. Um, I don't use salt on anything or sodium, but it's because it's in everything. Yes. Right. You gotta be careful. And then. That's why the least processed the better. Meaning, all that means is you didn't make it really. Right. You know. Fatty and fried foods are my downfall. <laughs> okay. Join the globe, right? I eat all of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can still saute in a little uh, olive oil, avocado oil, well, like an air fryer. Oil like that. Air fryer. Okay. Love yeah. love our air fryer. But yeah, that's, the thing that's is, you, have it. you go out, right. and they said, all right, well, you're going to get X item, and it comes with a side, and so it comes with French fries. Yep. A good example is here. Um, I don't know if you ever eat pig and cattle. You know, we haven't tried that yet. Okay, the barbecue is excellent. Yeah. Okay. But it comes with French fries. Okay. And First of all, just so you know, you both can eat pig and cattle mm -hmm. for under 20 bucks. Oh, really? I no, walk out of there stuffed. Wow. And of course, you get a free ice cream cone. Uh, okay. Well, I won't be having that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, Do they have others, other sides? They have a like full salad bar, salad? yes. Okay. Yeah, they have, they have other things. Okay. And they have other sides. Because it's, it's just a matter of the fries are white potatoes, too. Yeah. It's kind of a double whammy. You've got the nasty oils, most likely, and the white potatoes. Well, yeah, it's a question so. of do you want to at that point? Right. Make a decision. I mean, hey, I love fries too. I'm right. just saying, you know. Um, I don't do any alcohol. So I don't drink. Never so much really better. Have. That's um, why you don't have hepatotoxicity. You don't have liver, toxic liver. Even with yeah. the medications you take, I got to tell you, that's rare. Right. Really? So I think the way that you're already eating has helped you keep the toxins, keep your liver in, with the ability to dump your toxins and, that's and where flush it out of your body. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So that's really good. I eat, like I said, the only fish I eat is canned tuna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all eliminated for now for a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't drink coffee. The caffeine I'll get is through chocolate because mm -hmm. my wife's a chocolatier. Right. Dairy. And and I think you already mentioned you eat dark chocolate, right? Yeah. Well, ninety percent of the chocolate I eat is dark. Yeah. That's um, right. It's Eighty-five or And so it's, it's weird because I used to love milk. Now I don't eat the milk. She makes it mostly dark chocolate. Potatoes, nightshades. Yeah. Those are peppers, eggplants, any peppers, um, potatoes. Yeah, the white potatoes. White potatoes. Sweet but potatoes. You, sweet are potatoes. Fine. you know, all, all the winter squashes. All the winter squashes fine. you can have. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. I don't eat potatoes. Eggplant. Oops. So, dairy. I'm just trying to think for me what I eat dairy. So, uh, I'll eat every so often I'll have sour cream. Now, I used to, I remember my first date that I went on, when I was, I don't know, 13, we we'll get back to her house and she said, do you want anything? And I ate a container of sour cream, because I could eat sour cream like that. I don't know. Wow. wow. I love sour cream. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. But 
So the dairy I'll eat will be cheese. I don't eat cheese. Okay. Well, Very that's... little cheese. But I'll eat cream yeah. cheese. That's cheese. I said very little. I didn't say no. <laughs> I eat very little butter. Um, almost no milk. I'm thinking what else dairy I of course I have a little sour cream. Don't eat it a lot. That's really good. You don't have a lot of changes. No, is that my question up to you? Is that like recently? Because of the heart situation, you changed a lot of your diet? Because no. what the doctor told you, or you're still eating the same way? No, my doctor took me sixty the two years. We're almost, the same age, We're almost the same age, by the way. Okay. It took me okay. sixty years to get a heart attack. Okay? So I don't care. If I get another heart attack in sixty two more years from now, I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean no, you're I, not. I gave up sodas. Okay. So that's sugars. Good. A lot of sugars. That's huge. Oh, yes, a lot of sugar. Yeah, I'll huge. I'll have a ginger ale yeah. if in fact I feel nauseous because that's what we 